Good afternoon to you all. And also good evening to our colleagues joining from the Far East and Australia. And at the same time, a very good morning to ex joining from the Americas and the EU. Welcome to our next webinar conducted by the Sri Lanka Veterinary Association. And today's topic is on spiral medicine. And it is absolute pleasure to have all of you live from different parts of the world. So as usual, the today's session structure would be, uh, there will be a first uh, one to one and a half hour lecture followed by a Q&A session. And during the Q&A session, you can ask live questions and also uh, at the same time, you can text your questions through the chat option of the Zoom platform so that we can incorporate those questions also in between the live questions. And also, please note that this uh, session lecture goes live uh, in our Sri Lanka Veterinary Association YouTube channel. So if anybody interested, you can participate through YouTube channel. Uh, and also, before we start, a request from the organizers to mute your microphones so that we can have an uninterrupted session. Uh, so before we start, I would invite Dr. Erandika Gunawadana, the president of Sri Lanka Veterinary Association, to address this virtual gathering. Yeah, good afternoon, Dr. Chandika. Thanks uh, very much for your introduction. Actually, uh, on this peaceful Sunday and the pleasant Sunday, we are enjoying the weekend. So you are all are welcome to the webinar series conducted by Sri Lanka Veterinary Association. And uh, so we thought of having different, different high diversified topics like this, uh, you know, uh, squirrel medicines, the, because there were some enormous requests to update our knowledge on the diff different fields. So today we have a very renowned uh, uh, so, uh, resource person uh, uh, to uh, update our knowledge on uh, squirrel medicine. Uh, uh, thank you very much, Dr. Uh, Yanusha, uh, who coming forward to, uh, uh, give this webinar for us and meantime i would like to end, update you all that we have opened up uh, our research abstracts uh, we are having the scientific annual scientific sessions in coming october in sri lanka is online as an online webinar platform so all you all are welcome to uh, forward your uh, abstracts uh, online you can forward them to a sri lanka veterinary association website and meantime, uh, the, the, the closing date also for that, we have uh, given now another seven days more uh, until the, the end of uh, July. So don't hesitate to uh, contact us and send your abstracts for that uh, uh, annual scientific session so as, well, as well. And meantime, the person who, are, have, who needs to uh, uh, have uh, your veterinary magazine also, you can contact us and you can pay online uh, to our uh, portal, uh, portal payment uh, scheme under the Sri Lanka Veterinary Association. So that's also for the local veterinarians, my, that my message. You can just order that uh, magazine also online. And meantime, you can send you articles also for the up upcoming, upcoming magazine, magazine uh, uh, which we are launching the second volume of your veterinary magazine. So articles also all are welcome. You can just send them to our website or just uh, contact Dr. Disnaka or myself to send you articles as well. So uh, my dear teachers and colleagues and veterinarians who are joining here with us uh, from overseas also and local veterinarians, and all you all are welcome for this today's webinar. So I'll uh, hand over the forum to Dr. Chandika to conduct the session. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Randika. So now I would invite Dr. Sugat Temachandra, the Secretary of Sri Lanka <laughs> Veterinary Association, to uh, introduce our resource person today, Dr. Dinusha. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Chandika Vikramasinghe. Good evening to everyone. Good afternoon. It's a pleasure to introduce our research person today, Dr. Dino Shahada Silva. She is the one of the well famous veterinarian in the Sri, in Sri Lankan community. Dino Shah is a wildlife veterinarian attached to the Department of Wildlife Conservation. Currently, she works as a veterinary surgeon in charge of the wildlife hospital, which is the second largest wild animal hospital in Sri Lanka where she carries, carries out in-house and field treatment. On average per year, she treats about 600 wild animals ranging from low risk. One of her main interests and specialties is the rehabilitation and injured and often in Sri Lanka and followed in fish and wildlife management from the same university. 
After graduating, she worked with domestic animals in veterinary hospital and she and the uh, internship with the wildlife conservation and national zoological guard to gain extensive skills as a veterinary surgeon at the beginning. Dr. Dinusha also worked as an external lecturer teaching wildlife diplomats in wildlife health and conservation medicine at the University of Colombo. On behalf of Sri Lanka Veterinary Association, I would like to invite Dr. Dinusha to continue the program. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Sugat. So, directly, I would invite again uh, Dr. Dinusha to uh, continue the lecture. Hello, everyone. Uh, hope you can hear me clearly. Uh, good afternoon and good morning and good evening. Uh, hope uh, everybody is having a good day. Uh, thank you, Dr. Sugar, uh, for introducing me to the audience. Uh, I'm Dinusha and I'm a wildlife veterinarian and purely I work with uh, wild animals. Uh, I have given the topic of uh, common squirrel diseases and treatments. Uh, so let me share my presentation with you. Uh, all of you can clearly uh, see the screen and clearly hear me. Uh, so let me start my presentation by uh, giving you a brief introduction to squirrels in Sri Lanka. Uh, as you all know, uh, squirrels belong to the family uh, order uh, Rodentia uh, and family Suridae. Uh, this is a very unique group uh, and 40% of mammals uh, species are rodents, uh, and they are extremely diverse in their ecology. Uh, in family Suridae, there are uh, five subfamilies. In Sri Lanka, uh, we have three subfamilies as giant squirrels, flying squirrels, and uh, farm squirrels. Uh, let me briefly introduce Sri Lankan squirrels to you. First one is giant squirrel. Uh, there are three distinctive color phenotypes in Sri Lanka and they are entirely duranal. Uh, next one is giant flying squirrel. Uh, this is called Hambava in Sinhala. Uh, they are found in hill country uh, from mid, mid altitude. Uh, they are threatened and declining due to habitat loss. They are entirely nocturnal animals. Uh, next one is small flying squirrel. Uh, one of the cutest squirrels in Sri Lanka and extremely rare, uh, only find, uh, found in heavy forests of low altitude uh, or higher, uh, low foothills of high altitude. Uh, they are near threatened and could be endemic to Sri Lanka. And the next species is farm squirrel. Uh, it is the most common species and a very adaptable. Uh, there are three subspecies. Uh, and the next one is flame striped jungle squirrel, uh, not commonly seen. Uh, they are endemic to Sri Lanka. Uh, and the last uh, one is dusky striped squirrel. Uh, they are also found in highlands and uh, duranal and uh, very much a jungle dwellers. Uh, so, uh, not like in other countries. In Sri Lanka, uh, all the native species of squirrels are prohibited to wear as pets under the fauna and flora protection ordinance. Uh, in Sri Lanka, uh, there is no squirrel pet trade uh, like in other countries. However, uh, most of the people have experience in rearing squirrels as they become open, especially farm squirrels. Uh, the main reason for that is there's no rehabilitation centers nearby and they uh, hand rear those in, uh, open squirrels and more often release back to the wild. Uh, so when public find squirrels as open, it is advisable to contact closest wildlife rehabilitation center and hand over the animal to them. 
because uh, rehabilitation centers are more likely to have other squirrel pups, thus allowing squirrels to be raised with their own kind. Uh, and it reduces imprinting on the human uh, and it provides better preparation to socialization. Uh, when a squirrel is brought to your clinic, it is better to follow these steps. Uh, first, you have to determine the age of squirrel. Then you should get the weight of the animal. Uh, then you can uh, do general clinical examination. After that, you can decide uh, fluid and drug and administration. So uh, let's see how we can determine the age of squirrels and the feeding routines in relation to age. Uh, when they are less than one week old, uh, they are pink in color and no hair, eyes closed and ear pink back. Uh, and during age of uh, one to two weeks, uh, their fur begins to appear and uh, lower incisors begin to erupt and still uh, they are poor in thermoregulation. At two to four weeks of age, they often uh, ears unfold and respond to sight and sound. Uh, at age of five to six weeks, you can see thicker fur pods and tail become bushy and uh, they, uh, they are very active and playful. At age uh, seven to eight weeks, uh, teething uh, and rapid motor development can be seen and they are very inquisitive. At uh, age uh, eight to ten weeks, uh, they start become independent and they enjoy more free space and freedom. At uh, age uh, ten to twelve weeks, uh, we can see uh, adult fur coat beginning to uh, appear, and uh, they like to uh, do diurnal activities like playing on trees. And at age twelve to six, sixteen weeks. Uh, uh, they are just uh, expanding their range and become territorial uh, and you can see a uh, four set of adult feet appearing. Uh, at age uh, 16 to 8, uh, they reach 90% of adult size and 80% of adult body weight and at that stage you can release them back to wild. Uh, getting the correct weight is important. Uh, to calculate feeding volume and calculate correct drug doses. Uh, you can use normal kitten scale to weight your sphere. Uh, handling and examination. Ideally, uh, observe discreetly before examination, as you all know, wild animals hide injuries. Sometimes, spheres for the breed when they are under stress. Uh, be aware of it, uh, and they are surprisingly strong and fast, uh, so uh, ready for that, and uh, handle with cautious as they can inflict injuries. Uh, try not to change the holding grip when handling. When it comes to fluid and drugs, it is important to calculate body weight uh, to correct uh, to calculate correct drug doses. Oral route is uh, preferable for drug and administration, especially for farm spheres. Uh, and uh, it's better to avoid streptomycins and procancelicin when we treat uh, spheres. Uh, spheres get sick mostly due to improper uh, hand rearing procedures. Uh, so it's very important to advise your client on proper hand rearing procedures and techniques, uh, proper feeding techniques, uh, proper housing and warm techniques, and stimulation for defecation and urination. Let's talk about uh, proper feeding techniques. Uh, as I mentioned before, you need to determine the age accurately and need to get accurate weight. According to the age of squirrel, advise clients on necessary feeding volume and feeding frequency. 
And the next question is, what should they feed? We think first to allow us uh, better to use dehydration formula, and then uh, you can start with uh, milk replacer. Let's talk about this details of dehydration uh, solution. As I mentioned uh, in the previous slide, uh, rehydration formula should be fed with, uh, within first 12 hours. Uh, G1A is a good rehydration solution, or, or else you can uh, homemade rehydration solution uh, using following recipe. Uh, you can uh, take one cup of warm water and add a pinch of salt and a pinch of sugar and mix it well, and you can use it as a rehydration uh, formula. Uh, you should give it uh, every two hours, and uh, feeding volume should be more or less equal to 5% of uh, students' body weight. Uh, why is rehydration solution important? Rehydration solution helps to reduce shock, and uh, it, it is easy on digestive system of infant squirrel. It makes a good transition from mother's milk to substitute formula and it can facilitate a smooth transition from wild diet to rehabilitator's diet. Uh, here you can see uh, uh, composition of squirrel milk and uh, composition of cow milk. You can see it's uh, different from each other. So uh, it is not advisable to use cow milk as squirrel milk replacer. Uh, in other countries, uh, there are com commercially available milk replacers which can be for squirrels. But in Sri Lanka, we don't have such commercial products. Uh, so uh, we have to uh, go for uh, another option. Uh, so uh, as I uh, previously uh, showed, uh, cow milk is not preferable. Uh, but you can use a puppy milk replacer to feed uh, squirrels. Uh, if I uh, say brand names, uh, we can use Lactol or we can use uh, Royal Canine uh, puppy milk formula. Uh, you can use uh, one part of milk powder and add three parts of warm water and uh, make a milk replacer. Or else, uh, you can make your own milk replacer using goat milk. Uh, so you can. Uh, Follow this recipe. You can use two parts of goat milk and one part of warm water and four parts yogurt. And uh, you can add a pinch of calcium powder once daily. Oil. You can use two parts of goat milk and one part of warm water and add a pinch of calcium uh, powder once daily. So uh, when uh, transition from rehydration formula to uh, milk replacer, you have to do it gradually. Uh, first, you have to dilute milk replacer with uh, rehydration formula and gradually increase uh, the percentage of milk replacer. When deciding on correct feeding volume, you need to follow 5% rule that is comfortable stomach capacity uh, of uh, squirrel. 5% of their uh, body weight. Uh, when you feed adequately, the stomach should be full but still soft. And stomach should not be uh, palpable hard or should not uh, stretch like a balloon. Overfeeding can cause diarrhea while underfeeding can cause uh, dehydration and uh, emaciation. When it comes to frequency of feeding, it depends on the age of the squirrel. Uh, as I highlighted in the table, uh, when they are at uh, age of one week, uh, we have to uh, feed them at least nine times a day. Uh, when uh, they are two weeks of age, we can reduce it up to eight weeks. And when they are four weeks of age, we can feed them minimum seven weeks a day. Likewise, you have to adjust feeding frequency according to their age. Uh, it's very important to use correct feeding tools when you feed uh, infant squirrels uh, and never use feeding bottles uh, which we use for uh, 
did uh, fucking giant kidney because uh, these fading bottles can cause aspiration in uh, infant spheres. Uh, instead, you can use feeding syringes if you don't have commercial uh, available feeding syringes. Uh, you can prepare your own uh, using uh, one cc syringe and uh, butterfly uh, needle. Uh, you have to uh, use clean uh, feeding utensils to uh, avoid uh, diarrhea. Uh, it's important to hold your spiral correctly when feeding, mainly uh, to avoid aspiration. Uh, to avoid aspiration, uh, keep the spirals upright in your hand as shown in the picture and point the syringe toward the roof of their mouth. Uh, another important thing is to do not force the uh, infants. Weaning can start at uh, age of uh, two months. Uh, early weaning can cause digestive problems. Uh, diet can compromise of different uh, fruits and flowers, and also three baths. Uh, you can see a list of uh, weaning diets here. Uh, as a calcium supplement, you can uh, provide cuttlefish bones uh, or antlers. Uh, this will prevent uh, getting metabolic bone disease. Uh, and uh, if you like, you can uh, feed uh, summer kosher or cereals uh, as a weaning diet to squirrels. Uh, next one is uh, proper uh, warming and proper housing. Uh, it's very important to provide proper warmth as it enhances uh, the digestion and thereby increases uh, survival rate of uh, baby squirrels. Uh, you can use small plastic box to, uh, house bin uh, and you can use soft cloths to line the uh, plastic box accordingly. Uh, Make sure you do not use cloth with loose strings, uh, such as towels, uh, as the loose strings can entangle in uh, pores, teeth, neck, and can cause damages. Uh, also, uh, you have to change cloth often to prevent getting soil, uh, because soil cloths are predisposing for uh, pneumonia in infant spirals. Baby spirals uh, less than four weeks are unable to maintain body temperature by the, themselves. Uh, therefore, you uh, can use heat pad as shown in uh, picture uh, to regulate uh, and provide necessary temperature. Uh, keep the heating pad under uh, and covering half of the box and set it in lower heat. Uh, or else uh, you can use uh, uh, glass bottles to prepare uh, your own heating system. Uh, you can use all glass bottles uh, filled with hot water and wrap in oil t-shirts. Uh, it's ideal to use square shaped bottles uh, to prevent rolling the bottle over the spiral. Uh, sometimes people uh, house several cups together. Uh, if there are male infants, it's better to house them separately to stop uh, penile suckling. Uh, sometimes they suckle their own penis, meaning maternal suckling. Uh, so you can use a uh, loose sleeve to prevent, uh, just like in this picture, uh, uh, you can use loose sleeve to prevent uh, further damage. Uh, stimulation uh, for defecation and urination. Uh, Why mammal infants? Uh, whose eyes are still closed have to be stimulated to urinate and defecate. Uh, in order to that, uh, use a soft tissue paper uh, or a cotton bag uh, or a cotton ball damped with warm water uh, and rub the anal area gently. Uh, this stimulates perineal colic reflex. Uh, when rubbing, uh, use rapid but gentle strokes to stimulate maternal liquid. Uh, if a uh, stool is well formed, you can proceed with regular feeding. However, uh, if diarrhea is present, you have to adjust the uh, feeding. Uh, this is what happens if, if you do not 
stimulate steer properly. You can see uh, distended bladder uh, uh, and gut due to accumulation of feces and urine. Uh, so uh, you have to do it properly uh, and it helps to keep infant healthy. Uh, let's uh, talk about uh, some common issues, common health issues uh, among hand rearing students. Uh, first one uh, is pneumonia. It's a major cause for uh, death of uh, hand uh, rear uh, infant spheres. Uh, let's see what are the major causes. Uh, first one is aspiration. Uh, can happen uh, when feeding too fast or uh, feeding too much formula at once. Uh, and uh, pneumonia can occur when uh, you use uh, soiled uh, bedding without uh, cleaning them, and also uh, improper housing and heating system also can cause for pneumonia. Uh, so uh, these are the symptoms you can see in a uh, infant spur uh, which have uh, which has a pneumonia, clicking uh, and uh, just uh, abnormal sounds when breathing and open mouth breathing. Uh, Dunny nose or congested nose uh, and uh, loss of appetite. Uh, so, uh, according to the severity, you can use one of follow, one of following antibodies. Uh, so, if you are going to use uh, endotoxin via subcut route, uh, care should be taken to dilute it with normal saline. If not, uh, injection site necrosis can happen. Uh, if uh, signs are severe and uh, squirrel is in uh, messy discomfort, you can use analgesic uh, and antihistamine. Uh, you can use meloxicam uh, and uh, clopidine mallet. Uh, but uh, most of the time, uh, squirrels uh, do uh, well with uh, only antibiotics. They respond well within one to three days. Uh, the other uh, common uh, condition in hand rearing infants, uh, diarrhea. Uh, the major causing factors are uh, overfeeding, bed feeding tools, and improper milk replacer. Uh, when there's undigested milk in stomach, uh, you can see uh, uh, undigested milk. Uh, we, we call it a uh, milk line. Uh, here you can see in the picture. Uh, so you have to stop feeding uh, milk replacer until milk line gets disappeared. Uh, till it uh, get, gets better, uh, you can feed with rehydration solution. Uh, as soon as you observe signs of diarrhea, uh, you have to uh, stop uh, milk replacer, uh, or else you have to dilute milk replacer with uh, rehydration solution and given it. Uh, if the infant is very weak, you can add a uh, pinch of glucose to feed in formula. Uh, and uh, diarrhea, which occurs to the wrong feeding practices, is after uh, correction, uh, these correction, corrections. Uh, if uh, it's bacterial diarrhea, secondary bacterial diarrhea, uh, you can use uh, endoflopidine or Trinsalva to treat. And uh, if uh, frequency is very high, uh, you can use uh, anti drugs uh, like lopramide. Uh, the next uh, common condition in handling infants is bloat, usually seen in neonates or very young while infants. You can diagnose it uh, with uh, clinical examination or if you need, you can do radiograph. So these are the risk factors for bloat. Uh, it's, uh, Hypotonia with food in GI tract, uh, overfeeding, inappropriate milk replacers, uh, internal parasites, but very rarely, uh, diet changes, constipation, and internal abnormalities. Uh, once you identify the bloat, uh, you have to stop feeding uh, until it uh, resolves. Uh, you have to uh, stop milk replacer, and uh, if you need, to uh, keep uh, infant uh, hydrated, we can use rehydration formula, but not the milk replacer. Uh, 
when treating, we have to differentiate uh, whether it's an interval interaction, gaseous distension, or both. Most of the time, we can see uh, both uh, conditions uh, come together. Uh, if it's uh, due to interval interaction, we have to induce dissipation. Uh, we can use uh, warm water uh, massage uh, around the belly of the infant until uh, it dissipates. Uh, we have to repeat process every half, uh, half an hour until the bloating disappears. Uh, you can use uh, uh, these drugs if the condition is severe, uh, if an uh, infant in a uh, very uh, discomfort uh, mode. So you can use uh, infant simiticon or uh, and uh, meloxicam together to. Uh, make infant uh, feel comfortable. And the next common condition uh, with open babies uh, is a maggot free or deep infestation. Uh, when you find open babies with maggots and maggot eggs, uh, you have to remove those immediately. You can use cotton balls or with warm water to rub uh, them out. Uh, in severe cases, uh, you can use diluted iodomectin topically. Uh, you can use 0.2 ml of iodomectin uh, in 2 ml of distilled water and uh, use spray bottles uh, to spray it over the body of infant and uh, brush it with soft crystal brush. Uh, I uh, always use this uh, dilution with uh, even uh, dank spirals. Uh, and uh, even uh, with the uh, giant science spirals, it works very well. If not, you can use frontline uh, for uh, zero twenty-five percent treatment spray diluted with water as topical treatment. Uh, you have to repeat it uh, as necessary at uh, four weeks. Uh, next uh, condition. Uh, is a uh, hypoglycemic seizure. It's also very common in young animals. Uh, symptoms are uh, asking head back and acting very weak. Uh, you can uh, treat by using a few drops of 25% dextrose orally at 15 minute interval during first hour. Uh, or else you can do uh, some bees and uh, orally, or else put juice and glucose together orally. And uh, emaciation also a common problem among infant animals, not in adult animals. Uh, it's very common uh, in infants that have been open for a day or two. Uh, first, you have to feed uh, given your rehydration formula with uh, little glucose. Uh, within first hour, you have to uh, feed at every 15 minutes and then every two hours for the next 10 hours. And then you have to introduce milk replacer as I uh, discussed this earlier uh, slide. Uh, if spiral is unable to drink, then you have to give a uh, bolus of normal saline uh, via subcut through, but uh, you should uh, keep it, uh, you should use warm saline because if not, it can lead to hypothermia. Uh, after uh, administration of subcut fluid, you have to keep spiral in a warm place to enhance uh, fluid absorption and metabolic rate. Uh, this is a very common complaint with the wild animals uh, which, uh, which were admitted to our rehabilitation centers attacked by cats or uh, dogs. Uh, first thing you have to do uh, is clean the wound with antiseptics and examine to reveal uh, the puncture wounds through the hair record. Uh, then you can use uh, endoproxicin or ciproproxicin uh, as antibiotic and uh, meloxicam as uh, analgesic. Uh, sometimes uh, you can notice CNS trauma. Uh, in such cases, only in such cases, you can use methylpredicol or not, dexamethasone. And uh, here you have to uh, take the correct weight and calculate accurate dose uh, before you administrate uh, the drugs. Uh, the next uh, 
common, most common uh, complaint with wild animals, minor injury. Uh, uh, in wild animals, it's uh, most of the time because due to accidental falls from heights. But in uh, hand dried animals, uh, spinal injuries uh, can be occur due to uh, uh, effect of uh, metabolic bone disease. Uh, in such cases as treatments, we can uh, restrict movements of uh, animals to uh, reduce further damage, and uh, and we can uh, do physiotherapy with uh, Narayan oil, that is an gel, and we can use uh, uh, IR lamp. Uh, and then oral calcium supplement is uh, important and uh, you can use methylprednisolone, uh, same dose case you have to use with uh, brain damage. Uh, metabolic bone disease, uh, this is the most common condition in hand that adults fear. Uh, let me brief you with uh, some facts about metabolic bone disease. Uh, it can strike at any age. Uh, classic age of onset is uh, around 10 to 18 months. Uh, and uh, it's uh, basically because due to not enough calcium uh, in the diet. Uh, but uh, it can occur in babies less than four months also. Uh, it's because usually uh, due to early weaning and uh, weaning into strong diet. Um, these are the symptoms of metabolic bone disease, uh, loss of appetite, uh, lethargy, reluctant to climb or jump, muscle pain, paralysis, fractures, lameness and seizures. Uh, most of the time, uh, people notice uh, only seizures. Uh, so they come to uh, they come to clinic with complaint of seizures. Uh, you can go for more accurate diagnosis uh, by uh, Using radiographs, you can see the difference between two radiographs uh, with the patient uh, affected with MDD. You can see uh, very uh, light color bones because the uh, calcium deficiencies are very low in uh, MDD affected animals. Uh, as immediate treatment, you can use uh, calcium. Uh, preferably calcium carbonate, uh, but we can use any calcium as the uh, 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 any calcium as immediate treatment. Uh, so uh, you have to uh, you uh, orally uh, just you can make a paste uh, using a, a fruit juice or a dextrose solution and make a paste, and you can see this immediately. Uh, then you have to go for a uh, long term uh, treatment. Uh, you have to provide calcium carbonate without uh, vitamin D, uh, or else you can do calcium lactate or uh, calcium gluconate. Uh, direct calcium you have to supply. Uh, so you have to uh, take the body weight of spiral and calculate uh, dose of calcium uh, and break it into three portions. Uh, mix it with uh, several food diatom spiral and Give it daily up to three months, uh, and you have to adjust the diet of spiral to supply enough calcium. Uh, you can uh, use tree bark and uh, cattle bones, uh, cuttlefish bones, and antlers uh, uh, with diet to adjust uh, their calcium uh, requirement. Uh, after initial calcium dose, uh, most of the time symptoms. Uh, improve within few hours uh, and within one to three days squirrels should be active alert and meeting with no seizures or paralysis but you have to continue treatments up to three months and uh, also have to adjust the diet uh, but uh, with all the squirrels uh, that may take a longer time to uh, respond uh, in some cases uh, squirrels uh, do not respond well with treatments uh, it may have spinal injuries due to weak bones, uh, so it can lead to permanent paralysis. Uh, Mend is not a very common uh, condition among the squirrels, but you can uh, see mange uh, in 
some spirals uh, because due to uh, poor uh, sanitation and uh, improper housing. Uh, for that, you can use ivermectin. Uh, always, I use ivermectin as a topical solution, not as a, a subcut injection. Uh, topical solution uh, responds well. Uh, so you have to uh, dilute 0.2 ml of ivermectin in 2 ml of distilled water, and you can use it as a topical application. Uh, and you have to repeat in two days interval. Uh, if you are uh, going to give it in a subcut tool, uh, you have to uh, use it with uh, uh, meloxicam. Uh, so you have to repeat it in 10 days interval until uh, science gets visible. Uh, here, the main reason I have included this slide uh, because. Uh, Lots of people ask me uh, whether spirals get rabies and whether we uh, should uh, vaccinate our spirals against rabies. Uh, best practice is to release the hand dried spirals when they become self reliant. Uh, if your spiral bites bite you, keep an eye on it for the next 24 hours. If an animal dies uh, within 24 hours, you have to send it for testing rabies. It's very rare, but it uh, doesn't mean it cannot uh, appear in spirals. Uh, here, uh, this is the center of the disease control prevention definition or uh, information about uh, rabies among small rodents. Uh, you can see small rodents are almost never found to be infected with rabies and have not been known to transmit rabies to humans. For spirals, uh, especially farm spirals, there are uh, limited drugs uh, we can use because uh, they are very sensitive animals and we can't use most of the drugs uh, to treat them. Uh, this is a summary of drugs that I have uh, mentioned throughout my presentation. And these drugs I'm using for treatment of spirals without any complications. Uh, with that, uh, I wrap up my session uh, and uh, now I can take your question uh, if there are any. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Dr. Dinesha, for a very, very informative lecture. Yeah, uh, the lecture is open for questions now. If you have any questions, please uh, do ask uh, Dr. Dinesha now. Will others uh, ready with their questions? Can I ask you a question, Dr. Dinusha? Uh, yes. Now you mentioned about uh, that you would be cautious about using penicillin uh, in uh, squirrels. Uh, is there any like specific reason? Do they get allergic or uh, does it become toxic to them? Yeah, it's uh, uh, toxic for squirrels. Uh, they are not uh, tolerate penicillin well. Uh, but you can use augmentin, is that so? Yeah, only only augmentin we are using for spheres, and it's also uh, it's advi advisable to use uh, only oral uh, pediatric uh, suspension to treat spheres. Uh, but more most preferably, uh, ciprofloxacin and enfloxacin are a choice of drugs when we go with uh, antibiotics. All right, okay. And Dr. Banula needs to ask a question. Dr. Manolo, you can ask your question. You have raised your hand. Any others who need to ask? Uh, and hey, can I ask you? Yeah. Yes, Dr. Randika. Yeah, Dr. Randika Dinesha, actually, actually, yeah, it's a very highly yeah. informative and highly impressive presentation because it's quite new for us, the, the field of squirrels. And um, it's on not only the medication, it's you, you mentioned about the, all this management also as well. So thank you very much. My, my little concern is, uh, you, do you do, do us need to practice vaccinations for them? Like, uh, you know, I mean, anti-rabies, since they are rodent uh, okay. species? Oh. Uh, actually, doctor, uh, normally, uh, it's... Uh, Squirrels are very rarely rabies. I only know uh, about one incident. It's also not hand-reared one, it's a wild one. And it also died within 24 hours. That's why I mentioned 
that if spiral bite occur, you have to monitor animal for 24 hours. If animal dies, you have to uh, check its for babies. If uh, it's positive, you can get uh, treated. If not, uh, that uh, spirals are uh, very rarely get uh, uh, rabies. And as CD mentioned, uh, it's, uh, there are not known records about rabies transmission from spirals to humans. So it's not uh, necessary to uh, vaccine them uh, against rabies. If body owners prefer, they can never harm. I have done. Uh, but uh, but it's not necessary. And Dr. Mary has a question. Uh, any zoonotic diseases from spirals apart from rabies? Dr. Dinesha, do you have any comment on that? Dr. Mary has asked uh, that question. In Sri Lanka, actually, we don't have any uh, non zoonoses which transmit from spirals to humans, but in other countries, uh, the leprosy uh, and some uh, parasitic infections uh, they have mentioned uh, that can be transmitted from spirals to humans. Uh, actually, I have no experience about uh, those transmissions because in Sri Lanka we don't uh, have any known cases of uh, zoonotic uh, diseases transmitted from uh, spirals to humans. Thank you. And uh, another doctor has asked, what about internal parasites and best worming to use? Uh, do you have any thoughts on that, Dr. Dinesha? Uh, actually, uh, it's still very rarely get worm infestation. Uh, we can, uh, for instance, we can use uh, parental families. Uh, and uh, for adults, we can use the same dilution we use for uh, external parasites that uh, Agamectin dilution, we can use it orally to uh, deworm uh, spirals, or else you can use pacifental also, but spirals very rarely get a uh, worm infestation. And oral agamectin is basically safe for them, is that Dr. Yeah. Right. And Dr. Disnaka has a question, uh, are the dosages same for giant spirals also when you come across cases in wildlife? Yes, of course. And uh, with giant spirals, we can use uh, IEM, IEM and IV roots also. They are well tolerate uh, those roots uh, than uh, palm spirals because in palm spirals, we basically go for uh, oral roots. But with giant spirals, uh, we can use uh, IEM and IV roots also. Right. And there's another question uh, asking for enro dose rate. I think you mentioned it in the lecture also, but can you again uh, mention it for this uh -huh. doctor, please? Uh, we can use uh, 10 milligrams per kg uh, in uh, 24 hour interval. 10 milligrams per kg, uh, 24 hourly. Mm -hmm. Right. And uh, from Rasha, there's a question Is it okay to give bright water in cases of overfeeding or bloat due to overfeeding? Yeah, it's okay to give that water. It works well. Uh, and I have mentioned about uh, that gas net and also bright water you can use for the same condition. Right, and there's another question. What anesthetics uh, do you normally uh, use for uh, spirals when it comes to uh, procedures? Then uh, uh, for the palm spirals, uh, normally uh, it's better to uh, use uh, physical restraint methods. But if you need to do mild, uh, do mild sedation, you can use diazepam, or if you can use uh, ketamine. But uh, with giant spirals, we can use uh, Ketamine and cytokine combination, and also uh, ketamine alone. Oils, uh, ketamine and medicinal also can use. Uh, but with palm spirals, it's uh, preferable uh, not to use uh, 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 anesthetics uh, if you can restrain it physically. So, overall, what's your opinion, Dr. Dinosha, about uh, anesthesia and spirals when you compare it with uh, dogs and cats? The, the danger, how, how do you weigh it? Uh, with uh, palm spirals, uh, it's a uh, high danger uh, for uh, because uh, if you use uh, anesthetics, uh, there's a uh, potency of uh, get the complications and uh, death. But uh, that with dance spiral, you can use it just like uh, you use for cats. Uh, but if you need sedation for uh, any uh, protocol, you can use diazepam. You can use uh, three to five. Milligrams per kg, uh, diazepam, 
to uh, sedate uh, even calm spirits. Uh, right. And Dr. once Dinusha. Dr. Dinusha, I ask Dr. Sogar. Yeah, I have one question. Um, thank you very much for your uh, nice presentation and it's really attractive and informative one. Uh, normally, we are, we are not giving rabies vaccines to squirrel uh, household one. Uh, can we give it? Yes, you can give. Uh, for rabies? Yeah, you can, you can vaccinate them against rabies, but uh, they rarely get rabies. But if owners request from you to vaccinate uh, the squirrel, you can vaccine. It's a... Uh, it's, uh, do no harm for animals, but it's not actually necessary because uh, normally squirrels uh, do not get rabies because uh, it says that if they get rabies, they die very quickly. They have no time to uh, transmit it to anyone. No, it's like there are very uh, rare incidents of uh, transmitting uh, rabies from squirrels to humans. Okay, thank you. And one just a comment about the anesthesia. Now, I have used isoflurane anesthesia very successfully once to do actually a cesarean uh, of a uh, squirrel, which was very successful, but the squirrel had to be euthanized later for other reasons. But uh, isoflurane uh, is like really, really um, safe, and he was like really stable under isoflurane anesthesia. Yeah, that's great to know because actually in our facility we are still uh, not using isoflurane, but we are planning to uh, initiate. So it's a great right. comment to know that. Thank you. And our international colleagues, do you have any questions uh, to ask from Dr. Dinusha? Either you can ask live or you can, as uh, previously, you can type the question. There are two chat questions. Uh, once we prepare a milk replacer, can we refrigerate it to be reheated and uh, used at least once? Uh, what's your opinion on that, Dr. Dinosha? You have to freeze it. Uh, you can put, uh, you can use ice spray and uh, put milk replacer to the air. You can freeze it, and uh, then uh, you reuse it. You have to warm it, uh, not in a direct uh, heat. You have to use a double boil uh, method to reheat that. Freeze in a sense. Is it not the normal uh, refrigerator or? Uh, uh, yeah, normal refrigerator, but in the deep freezer section, you have to keep that. In the deep freezer. Yeah. And when you reheat, uh, what did you say? How do you do it practically? You have to, you have to uh, do a double boiling method. It means you can't put it in uh, direct heat. You can use warm water uh, to uh, reheat the... Uh... All right. Okay. Right. That's a great thing to know. And there's another question from Dr. Damika Pereira. Uh, why we should prevent vitamin D with Calcium, vitamin D support you for the absorption of calcium from the gut, as we know. Uh, can you please explain? Uh, but with squirrels, it is different. With squirrels, uh, when we give direct calcium, it's uh, very easy for them to absorb. Uh, that's why we are giving direct calcium for them uh, after they get disease. If not, you can give, uh, if the squirrel is normal and you're adding supplement to its food, you can use that. But when it, it gets disease, you have to use direct calcium to treat. Right. So they have they must be having some different metabolic uh, like pathways. And at the same time, Dr. Dinosha, I uh, have another question. Now, in dogs and cats, we usually avoid ciprofloxacin and uh, enrofloxacin, any fluoroquinolones when it comes to a small uh, aged ones, uh, thinking that there can be bone issues. Uh, but you mentioned that you can give uh, uh, endofloxin to uh, tiny squirrels. Yeah. Is that yeah. also uh, due to a different metabolic uh, path in squirrels? Yeah. Most of the time with wild animals, uh, endofloxin is well tolerated. Uh, so uh, those things, uh, it's, uh, we use 10 milligrams uh, most of the time. Uh, but 
Sometimes we can go uh, with 5 mg per kg, but for stress, 10 mg per kg is very tolerated. Uh, we uh, normally use that. Uh, otherwise, with that, other wild species also, I mean, the uh, rabbits uh, and raptors also, uh, that those take a very uh, So even so, with one or two uh, month old uh, squirrel, yeah. we can use the end of protein, yeah. right? Yeah. And there's another question from Dr. Nadini. Uh, what is the minimum age to give entry rabies if the owners uh, want it? Uh, we can, uh, uh, the uh, minimum age, uh, we can use it about four weeks of age. I can use uh, without any complication. Even uh, for giant squirrels, I have used. Soon after they open their eyes, we can uh, use uh, entry rabies. All right. And do you recommend to give a booster after four weeks or just uh, annual yeah. boostering only? Uh, we recommend a uh, booster after four weeks. And then yeah. annual? Yeah, then annual. All right. Any other questions from the audience? Because yeah, this Dinesha, is, this I mean, is... yeah, you have one last question from me actually. Yeah. And you mentioned about this, you know, not to give uh, the vitamin D with calcium, like, but in the most of the time, we get in the market a lot of calcium preparations, syrups, and drops they are available combined with uh, vitamin D, I think, you know, up to my knowledge. So, you do you recommend any 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 uh, uh, preparation in the market? Uh, I mean, uh, for our knowledge, yeah. We can use a calcium lactate tablet, uh, it's available as 3 milligram tablet. Uh, uh -huh, can... uh -huh. Yeah. Uh, the thing uh, you should when when you calculate the dose uh, in uh, that tablet, uh, mental calcium uh, only uh, available uh, thirty percent from the weight. So you have to mm -hmm. uh, we uh, should calculate dose weight uh, uh, for the elemental calcium. Oh, okay. Thank you, Dinusha. Yeah, any other questions from the audience? Because now this, I think, is a lifetime chance. We don't get, like, a chance to ask questions from a wildlife specialist uh, routinely. So I would uh, suggest that you use this uh, chance optimally if you have any other questions. Okay, in the absence of uh, other questions, I would now invite uh, again Dr. Sugat Premachandra, the Secretary of Sri Lanka Veterinary Association, to deliver the vote of thanks. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Chandika. Good evening to everyone. Uh, Dr. Randika Gunawardana, the President of Sri Lanka Veterinary Association, Dr. Dinusha Dizilwa, our resource person today, dear doctors, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Sri Lanka Veterinary Association, I take this opportunity to extend our most sincere gratitude to Dr. Dinusha, who accepted our invitation as resource, as resource person despite the busy schedule. You did a great job. It's a really informative, creative, and attractive presentation. I think the knowledge you have shared will help immensely to improve the knowledge of the veterinarian around the world. And also, I would like to thank our resource, our uh, moderator today, Dr. Chandika Vikramasinghe. And also, I would like to thank all the veterinarian participated for the webinar today, especially veterinarian from the Southeast uh, and uh, Australian, U UAE and USA veterinarian who part participated for the webinar today. And also, I would like to invite you to join our next webinar on next Friday at 1 p.m. Sri Lankan time for the webinar. Uh, thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Dr. Sogat. Thank you, Dr. Dinusha. Thank you so much for giving me the opportunity.